Hello, beautiful, amazing, fantastic world, and you, wonderful, wonderful individual. Today, I would like to speak about the natural counteraction of hatred through love. For, if we allow our inner being, our soul, to be taken by disdain, by hatred, by complaints, by any of these feelings that well, it's not healthy for our soul, but nonetheless kind of feels satisfying in the moment. It's about that the <sighs> difficult to say, but the adversary forces try to fish out of us the forces they are using. They use hatred and disdain and annoyance and irritation and such to bring out reactions, any kind of reaction, truly. And to be able to hold to love consciously, despite any pain, despite any turmoil and so on. To hold to, well, if you consciously hold to the Christ in your heart, Father in your will, the Holy Spirit in your thoughts and so on. You are filled with the love, the protection, the nourishment your soul needs to passively resist whatever temptation might come your way. As we said, we are still human beings and have karma and certain times it is not necessarily not possible because the feeling the what comes after is a certain nourishment for the soul because we need to reflect on what just happened and come to a term, come to accept those situations, you know, forgiving oneself, trying to make amends as best as possible and so on but to hold to the love and compassion, for it is so needed. It is the nourishment of the gods, of the higher realms, you know, of the hierarchy. And without love, we will not be able to develop in a true, divine and human sense. For love is the most ultimate and the strongest force in the whole cosmos, in the whole of the hierarchy. The three most strongest forces is faith, love and hope where love is the strongest of these of these three so the strength required to hold to love despite all the ugliness in the world is a strength that is built over time through meditation through studying through truly coming to an understanding of esoteric facts and cosmic mysteries and truths it is all about how Willing are you to go deep into it? And how much are you willing to truly see truth in its wholeness, in everything? To find the underlying stream of compassion and love that truly lies within us, in our heart. Something we choose in freedom. Remember, we also choose hatred in freedom. We allow ourselves to be taken by these forces in freedom. When you stay strong consciously within your own inner being, you don't allow such forces because they are not human decency. Inner human love, love, compassion, understanding, and meeting another, soul to soul, kind of a melding, but still keeping oneself individual at the same time, is something that should be striven for. For we need, or we should, cultivate our faculties and ab ability for listening, for holding a sturdy and strong morality within our heart. For it is a divine cosmic force. It is not something you arbitrarily try to explain with materialistic definitions. Because that cannot be. It is not possible. You will never find the source there. But the source lies deep within and also high above. It is kind of no difference there, really. For we are a ma microcosm in a macrocosm. But we need to realize it or else it is but an abstraction. For if we don't understand that term, if we do not know why that is, how that is, and how we operate with it, it is an abstraction. You see, we need to truly come and live into it, live into the hierarchy. For the hierarchy will show itself when we are ready. 
You see, we need to earn our way into the spiritual world. We have fallen pretty darn low into materialism, into the surface level of pure sense perception and rationality. But our heart is barely noticed anymore. So the more we use our love, the more we counteract this hatred, the more we counteract the, well, more fuel to the fire. We do not fight fire with fire or oil, fight fire with oil. We do not send a demon to fight a demon. We do not use demonic weapons to fight demons. We use love. You see, that's the difference. For if we try to destroy the evil that's here, this is just an objective example, it would reincarnate. And not only that, the action we did to try to destroy evil is in itself an act of evil. You, we use the we their weapons. We got tempted to use their faculties. But holding to love, passive resistance to evil, the Manichaean way, transforming evil within ourselves. For there are far more good people than there are evil people in this world. You see, evil has to be chosen in freedom. It has to be truly chosen, consciously. Have you... Just imagine that. Imagine them consciously going down into the abyss. Oh, what a life, I would dare say. It is no hold to love. Love is warmth. Love is growth. Love is nourishment for the soul and spirit. Love is what connects us to the hierarchy. For the hierarchy is morality. It's love. It's devotion. It's, well... You know what the hierarchy is. You have a sense of it, although you cannot put it into words. But it is so sublimely divine. And they are here around us, both sense perceptibly as the effect of, as the results of spiritual facts, physical, sense perceptible results. What happens in the physical is spiritual facts. It is the spiritual activities that occurs in this realm. And to connect to that, to try to get a living feeling of the cosmos, not having some sort of mechanical structure, because mechanical structure only exists in relation to the human being and to machines. Specifically things that repeat certain actions constantly and are specifically made for a certain task. But you cannot make a machine capable of every task possible, you see. Because it is far too clunky, far too one-sided in a sense. But when you become an organic, spiritual, divine, malleable human being, you have such a inner flexibility that you can switch your conscious focus and also understanding on a dime based on what's necessary. Of course, we practice and train and dedicate our lives and time to this. We cannot truly live without it once you have opened the door. It is impossible. For life comes from this work, comes from the spiritual esoteric practices and studies. You open your realm up to something far more amazing than only the sense perceptible. You bring new layers to reality. You bring divinity, the divine to reality again. And you try to meet them, not dragging them down to the materialistic realm, but lifting the, material, the materialistic, materialistic realm up to the spiritual, spiritualizing it. For it is lazy to try to drag down and try to explain everything in materialistic terms. That is laziness. It is passive thinking. It is, not, it is passive observation. But when you use your inner faculties for... Life, for spirit, for awake, creative imagination, inspiration, and intuition. Of course, you can also say to yourself, that is not, that is not a thing, that is not reality. But all to one's own inner opinions, I guess. It is all about, well, finding out in an open and a curious, wondrous, or inspiring way. 
like a child that experiences something amazing for the first time and they are kind of in awe, that feeling, but in a conscious, self-chosen way. It is devotion to the Lord, to the higher realms. So you feel that in your whole being and there's not space for hatred. It's not space for disdain. You do not allow your heart to be taken by such forces. Of course, as I said, we have karma in certain times. It happens, but we try to adjust ourselves and do the best out of these things. Making amends or, well, readjusting our practices so we can, well, develop certain sides to sides to us that might help in the endeavor, that might strengthen our inner disposition for compassion and morality and goodness and truth. So I will leave you with this today. Thanks, Father, Holy Spirit, Christ, Micah, Ancient Masters of Old, Ancestors from Incarnation, bless, protect, guide and love you. And may Godhead, Seraphim, Cherubim, Thrones, Kyriadotis, Dynamis, Exusiae, Archai, Archangels and Angels, all bless, uh, all keep you safe, provide you with all that you need to survive, live and thrive, being creative and inspirational to others, so others also can grow into that themselves. And we build Philadelphia together, the community of brotherly and sisterly love, a true community that is built on transparency, truth, love, compassion, and well, humanness. For the human we find in our heart, in our conscious, striving for love, freedom, compassion, and communion with the higher realms in God. We strive for it daily, every day, all day, more or less. And we, it won't stop until we take our last breath, you see. And that is the living spiritual way. For we never stop changing. After seven years, our whole physical body has changed every cell. We are not the same physical being anymore, but you still have your core. It's like when you are feeling with your emotions, you don't feel because you release chemicals. Chemicals are released because you feel. Because your spirit feels and hence it wants to express itself in a certain way and releases certain chemicals that align with that specific experience and feeling and sensation. That is the spiritual fact in the physical result. Just as an example. <laughs> and that is what I will leave you with today. Love you so much. Thank you for listening to me. You beautiful, curious, wondrous human being, individual personality you. May you be safe. And may you be sound and I send prayers of love and compassion to you. And I pray for your success in the endeavor of development and, well, growth in all areas. Thank you so much. Goodbye.